Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Today we're going to talk about ships. Very, very big ships. So we know as of now the largest capital ship in the first order is the Finalizer, a resurgent class battle cruiser. She's a beauty. At 3,000 meters in length, the resurgent class is about twice as long as the Imperial class Star Destroyer, and almost three times as long as the Republic flagship Home One. But according to Resistance Intelligence, believe that the First Order has ships even larger than the Resurgent class. After the Battle of Jakku, Chancellor Mon Mothma of the Republic and Grand Visor Masamita signed the Galactic Concordance, a peace treaty that would end the Galactic Civil War. Amongst the Republic's demands to the Empire was a massive disarmament of the Imperial military, including its navy. This made it increasingly difficult for the First Order to commission new ships for its fleet, especially large capital ships. With the loss of Quat Drive Yards and several other factory worlds, how is it possible for the First Order to create ships larger than a Star Destroyer? Well, what if it didn't have to build one? After the Battle of Endor, two major players came out on top after the initial chaotic scramble for power by Imperial leaders. One was Gallius Rax, the Emperor's protege and contingency plan. He was the secret leader of the Imperial Remnant. Then there was Grand Admiral Ray Sloan, the leader of the largest fleet left in the Empire. Sloane naturally didn't trust Rax, so she carried out a private secret investigation in the Imperial Archives on Coruscant to see just what was in the Empire's remaining inventory of weapons and ships. We know that the Empire had 13 Super Star Destroyers left before the Battle of Endor. Since then, the Ravager, her flagship, was the sole remaining Super Star Destroyer, or so she thought. The Executor was lost at Endor when it plunged into the Death Star. Two more Star Destroyers were surrendered to the Republic, and one was taken over by Republic troopers while it was being refitted in Quat. Five more were destroyed in battle, and one was taken by pirates, and one was sucked into a gravity well while trying to escape from New Republic ships. And lastly, there's the Emperor's own command ship, the Eclipse. Apparently, she had been destroyed by Admiral Akbar's own flagship, Home One. Sloan noticed something was off with the records. Every Imperial ship has a black box, and that black box continuously sends information to the Imperial Archives on Coruscant. But the Eclipse stopped broadcasting that information a day before it was supposedly destroyed. And on top of that, over a quarter of the entire Star Destroyer fleet was also missing data. That's over 6,000 ships. Ray's investigation proved very insightful. Shortly after her trip to the Imperial Archives, Gallius Rax revealed that he did indeed have several Imperial fleets hidden across the galaxy, along with a few worlds geared for manufacturing. But it wasn't until the last arrows of the Battle of Jakku that Gallius Rax reveals his full endgame to Sloan. He had planned to take the loyal remnants of the Empire deep into the Unknown Region, where he could recreate an Empire in his own image. This was his contingency plan, adopted from Emperor Palpatine himself. And now, it was Grand Admiral Ray Sloan's plan. Because she shot him. Like, several times. Jakku would be Rax's beginning and end. Ray Sloan, along with Brendel Hux and his son Armitage, would brave the harrowing journey through the Unknown Region together. When they emerged from hyperspace, sitting in front of them waiting was the Emperor's Dreadnought, the Eclipse. There's almost no canon information about this ship, but the Eclipse has long existed in Legends. And like most things that are taken from Legends and made canon, a lot of the information that was true in Legends is usually carried over. Its hull is reminiscent of the ancient battleships that once cruised the oceans, and one of the most recognizable features of this ship. The Eclipse eclipsed even the Executor class Star Destroyer in overall tonnage. The Dreadnought featured a super laser similar in design to the Death Star, along with gravity well projectors and over a hundred tractor beams. Its reinforced armor and blade-like hull was capable of slicing through other capital ships. Painted jet black, it was very much a psychological weapon as much as it was a strategic one. I go as far to say that the Eclipse was the most powerful ship left in the galaxy. At one point in time, it had gone up against the Annihilator, an Executor-class Super Star Destroyer, and easily destroyed it. Again, this is all based on Legends information, so we're not really sure exactly what the armament on this ship is like. We're not even sure if this ship has survived until the events of The Force Awakens. But in my personal opinion, I think it's very likely we'll see this ship in either Episode 8 or Episode 9. Supreme Leader Snoke, the head of the First Order, is said to have a mobile command center. 
And what better location for him to be than in the largest ship in the First Order? If that is the case, it should be interesting to see how the New Republic forces will be able to handle a ship of this magnitude. They really don't have a countermeasure designed to go up against a ship as large as the Eclipse. Now, the newest capital ships that we know of in the Republic are the Nadari Mark I Starhawks. Built from dissembled Imperial capital ships, the Starhawk was a very capable ship. It had an extremely powerful tractor beam. The Concorde, one of the first Mark I Starhawk battleships, even managed to drag the Super Star Destroyer Ravager down with it to the planet's surface in the final moments of the Battle of Jakku. But in a straight fight, the Starhawk was still easily outclassed by the Executor-class Star Destroyer. Well guys, that's all we got for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to learn more about Gallius Rax or the Emperor, please check out our video on that subject. We'll put a link for it in the top right corner. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of our new content. And as usual, thanks for joining us. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.